dialogue. China has long shared close and cooperative relations with Serbia and Hungary. China and Serbia are iron brothers and comprehensive strategic partners. Hungary is a firm supporter of East-West cooperation and is among the very first to benefit from cooperation on the Belt and Road Initiative with China. How has the friendship between China and Serbia been made? Are China and Hungary ready to push their ties to new heights? And what more fruitful results can be yielded with a healthier China-Europe relationship? With these questions in mind, in the first half of today's show, I spoke to Dr. Ivana Latvek, Deputy Director of Institute of International Politics and Economics in Belgrade. In the second half of the show, I also talked to Gladim Papin, President of the Hungarian Institute of International Affairs. That's our topic. I'm Xu Qinduo. Welcome to Dialogue, uh, Dr. Latvak. China is willing to strengthen high-level exchanges and cooperation with Serbia so as to push the bilateral ties to new heights. So what is your understanding of a possible new heights of China-Serbia relationship, which is already very strong? Uh, yes, I can agree with you. Um, maybe someone outside of the Serbia and China could wonder how it is possible to make uh, stronger relations than the existing now between China and Serbia. But I think there is a lot of uh, things that we can do together. Because uh, first of all, we should also struggle within the United Nations for the um, respect of the international law, which is very important for Serbia and China as well. But also we can do a lot in uh, um, deeping, uh, deepening more uh, areas of our cooperation. You know, our political ties are very, very strength, of course, but we can do more for our economies. And uh, those are the areas of maybe artificial intelligence in which we can cooperate more and some other areas like our tourism and, or to work more about the education and exchange and this strengthening people to people dimension of our bilateral relations. Uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping, you met uh, Serbian President uh, Aleksandr Vucic. President Xi Jinping called Serbia an, uh, quote, uh, ironclad friend of China. You know, that is a very, uh, of course, impressive uh, characterization of this bilateral relationship. Uh, uh, tell us what's your understanding of this ironclad friendship between the two countries? Uh, you know, this is something that really... Um connects China and Serbia through all these decades, because uh, since we're establishing diplomatic relations, we really have excellent political ties. And uh, during the 2000s, there was uh, a recognition of Serbia as a friend because China decided to uh, make an agreement of strategic partnership with Serbia, which was at that moment the eighth uh, agreement of that type in the world. And this shows our, uh, us here in Serbia how China respects us. And on the basis of that strategic agreement, we, we started to build more, uh, to work more on uh, developing of our relations. And uh, this uh, ironclad friendship uh, turned to be uh, the real one during the pandemic, you know, when Serbia was the first country in the world that received the vaccines and not only the vaccines from China as uh, medical assistance, but also China sent uh, the team of their medical experts. And they came here initially for two weeks and then at the, at the end they stayed here two months to help our medical workers to, uh, to cope with this pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, well, of course, also uh, late last year, actually in October, the two countries signed a free trade agreement. Uh, people would say that's the first one, you know, China signed with uh, a Central and Eastern European country. Uh, of course, there's also agreements, you know, signed uh, with the Chinese companies in terms of infrastructure uh, construction. Uh, for example, this, uh, this uh, you know, Chinese Central Bank and also their counterpart uh, from Serbia. They signed an MOU on establishing this yuan, the Chinese currency, uh, clearing uh, arrangements in Serbia. Uh, tell us what, you know, what, does those, what do those um, you know, arrangements mean to this economic and the trade relationship between the two countries? All these agreements that were um, signed uh, during the uh, third forum of the Belt and Road Initiative opens a uh, new era in uh, um, relations between Serbia and China. Because uh, you're uh, 
audience may know that Serbia is participating within the Belt and Road Initiative, but also within this China CE countries a model of cooperation since, since 2012, um, when this uh, initiative also started. Uh, so, uh, so far, uh, Serbia really have an um, excellent presence of Chinese companies here and they helped us a lot in uh, uh, developing our economy. But this free trade agreement uh, also means a lot because there is a, a possibility to exchange uh, the trade and all the goods uh, without tariffs. And there is also another beneficial uh, mode connected to this free, free trade agreement is that China, when entering into a Serbian um, a market, also can use our products and uh, to sell them without uh, tariffs because uh, Serbia has excellent cooperation within SEFTA countries and we also have some preferential agreements with the Russian Federation and also Euro uh, Eurasian economic area. And speaking of this uh, exchange of monetary uh, between uh, Serbia and uh, China, this is also very important because it is uh, okay for the, for us not to be dependent anymore on uh, dollar as uh, exchange in in, in our uh, internal uh, trade or the euro or something. It is always good to have a domestic exchange uh, monetary. Mm -hmm. uh, well, on this uh, FTA, of course, you know, free trade agreement, basically, you know, tariff for free um, goods and services, you know, from the two countries. Uh, uh, tell us, you know, what, um, you know, uh, do the Chinese consumers in China expect to receive all the goods or the services from Serbia? Or, you know, uh, likewise, you know, what do uh, the Serbian consumers uh, expect from China? Uh, well, uh, there is a certain imbalance between our two countries because we are small, although China never uh, treats us as a small country, uh, but as a country that is on the same level with it is. But uh, there are a lot of uh, agriculture products that may be interesting for Chinese customers, uh, like uh, Serbian wine or some other uh, products of uh, um, those agri uh, also agri uh, um, not only the wine but other uh, fruits or may maybe some vegetables mm -hmm. while uh, for, uh, for Serbian uh, customers here are interested in various goods that are coming here from China this is something like um, uh, high-tech uh, products etc but uh, the this area of services is something that can be uh, very interesting because this is uh, that we can exchange even our experts in some areas and also these services may be applied to the uh, uh, tourism as the area which can be very interesting for uh, Chinese people to come and visit Serbia and I saw that agreement in uh, English or in Serbian it, it, it has uh, more than 800 pages but you can only assume how many pages it has in, in Chinese speaking of writing in Chinese characters of course and uh, this agreement is excellent because it has all these annexes and all these tables so uh, one should uh, have I think many months to go into all of it but it's good that our negotiation uh, negotiators uh, take care of every detail and I think when uh, it's finally got rat ratified uh, this agreement will, uh, would really make a new uh, era in our relations. Mm, a new era in our relationship. Uh, of course it's been 11 years uh, since China uh, took the initiative, you know, introduced this uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, we understand that you have been speaking very highly of the initiative. Uh, uh, so I wonder what is your uh, analysis, understanding of these outcomes of BRI, uh, you know, the first decade, or the, or around first decade, and also, you know, how do people see the initiative uh, inside Serbia? Uh, for Serbian people, initiative is very important because uh, the main infrastructure projects that we needed, because and there was a lack of finance, unfortunately, were financed through Belt and Road Initiative. And this is the Belt and Road Initiative that made possible uh, Belgrade people to have another uh, bridge over the River Danube because sadly, but it's true, until 2015, Serbia had, Belgrade had only one uh, bridge over the Danube River until this Mikhailo Pupin bridge that was built by Chinese companies. But not, not only that, because uh, there is also this very important railway that connects Serbia and Hungary 
But even further, it connects uh, Greece with the rest of the North Europe and Central Europe. And this is also something that was financed through the Belt and Road Initiative. In Serbia, almost the entire project has been finished. Uh, even more, through Belt and Road Initiative, it was possible to bring here uh, companies from China that invested in our big factories that had a lot of problems during the decades, last decades. And now we have this steel mill in Smederevo, who is uh, the biggest exporter uh, from Serbia and also uh, has a significant role in the European Union market with steel products. Uh, the same is the case with the Zijin, who invested in the uh, bore mining. And now we have a very famous uh, factory and production lines there. And um, the most important is in all these projects is that all working places have been kept because uh, Chinese employers kept all those workers and even opened new working places. And now we have uh, these uh, small uh, vicinities that have uh, even higher standard than some other uh, bigger, bigger cities in Serbia. And uh, of this uh, overall, um, let's say, valuation of the Belt and Road Initiative, I can say that at the beginning, no one could say how, how successful this initiative would be. You know, now it, it has um, support of more than 130 states that joined the initiative. And this is also the case with big international organizations. You know, you have the International Monetary Fund and the, Bel uh, and the World Bank that supports Belt and Road Initiative. It's, it really tells us something because for decades people uh, felt somehow lost. Uh, everything was decayed dictated by the uh, International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, and we had a lot of uh, unfavorable uh, credit lines, etc. But now, for the first time, we can uh, uh, cooperate within Belt and Road Initiative, which is not conditioned by anything. Uh, it is only uh, your uh, free will to decide whether you like to join it or not. And there is uh, for sure that it is beneficial for all parties that are participating in it. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, Belt and Road Initiative, uh, you know, at the very beginning, uh, it's uh, completely about, you know, people would say infrastructure, uh, because mm -hmm. infrastructure investment uh, is lacking. Uh, there's a huge uh, deficit in terms of uh, investing in that sector, I mean, uh, around the world, especially for probably uh, less advanced economies. Uh, so in that respect, uh, BRI, uh, you know, does play a very important role in infrastructure uh, construction. And of course, that will boost economic and trade, uh, you know, for individual countries and for regional uh, development. Yes, yes, it's true. And this is something that uh, is the most obvious in uh, African continent, you know, because unfortunately, for centuries, Africa was only exploited and their people and there was a lot of countries that were coming there just to take something and nothing to give them. And now you have China who invested there in infrastructure, which is really the precondition for development of those countries. Uh, recently, I have had an opportunity to talk uh, with people from several African countries, and they're speaking with uh, so much, uh, uh, they're really thrilled with all that that happened in Africa, because for the first time that they, they have roads, they have railway, but even important, there, there are people that finally had the, the running water. You know, this is really, uh, I, I don't know how to explain, because we are living in the 21st century, but there are people that are lacking uh, the, you know, the basic requirements for life. And this is why the Belt and Road Initiative is very important, because finally we can speak about African continent not like on uh, underdeveloped uh, continent or underdeveloped countries. So um, everyone has uh, profited from, from this initiative. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Ludwig. Thank you for speaking with us. Uh, hope to have you again uh, on our show. Thank you very much for inviting me. Let's have a short break. When we come back, I spoke to Gladin Papen, president of the Hungarian Institute of International Affairs, to take a close look at the relationship between China and Hungary.